and the fire blew through here, there was nothing anyone could do. There's just a point where you just got to pack up and go. The brush burning index, that's a number that we rate the threat of a brush fire, is 296. This is the highest number I've ever seen in my career. 5,000 firefighters are battling not one, but two unforgiving enemies in California tonight, fire and wind. Together, they're laying siege to hillsides, highways, and countless homes. The Southern California wildfires, four major ones, are being fueled by strong Santa Ana winds. Officials are so worried about how dangerous and powerful they may yet become, they've raised their maximum threat level up from red to a brand new designation, purple. They say wind gusts could reach hurricane strength up to 130 kilometers an hour, pushing those flames faster and farther across some of the most densely populated parts of the state. Fortunately, things aren't quite that bad just yet, but it's still a major struggle for firefighters. Consider this. In just four days, the largest wildfires in the state have already burned through almost 500 square kilometers, triggering evacuation orders affecting about 200,000 people. They've destroyed more than 300 buildings, including many homes, and there are thousands more under threat. The biggest fire is still the one near the city of Ventura, where the flames jumped a coastal highway overnight, shutting it down for hours. One body has also been found in a burn area. In Los Angeles, two fires are still burning within the city limits, and authorities were so concerned, they sent an emergency text to 12 million people telling them to be ready to get out. That's the single widest text alert ever issued in state history. So, Kim Brunhuber went to one L.A. neighborhood left scorched by fire, where he found both hope and despair side by side. It's an unnerving feeling walking through the ashes of someone's home. It just climbed up the hillside, and with the wind, it, we didn't have a chance. Early this morning, the flames first crept, then sprang up the hill, almost trapping her husband, Steve, inside their home. When I opened the door, embers flew in. And so, <coughs> so it was time to get out of here. <coughs> Do you think you're going to be OK? <gasps> no, I got to go sit down for a while and see if I can get this out of me. This house in the San Fernando Valley, 30 kilometers northwest of Los Angeles, is just one of hundreds that has been destroyed by a series of fires. This, the Creek Fire, has now headed north. The temperamental winds have driven it into the hills, away from this neighborhood of Shadow Heights, for now. But all over, there are still hot spots. I was just walking past this hill, and I saw a fire spring up in this bush here. I threw dirt on it, hoping the smoke would attract nearby firefighters. Across from the Sanders home, Oni Vitandam is watering her property. She survived the genocide in Cambodia, only to almost perish 40 years later in California. The fire was so close to her house, the fence is charred and her patio furniture is melted. The firefighters were so busy at the Sanders, she says, she had to try to douse the flames herself from above. And so I climb up the tree, I almost burned myself to death. You didn't know that the tree that you were in was actually burning at the same time? Yes. God saved my life. So I'm going to serve him the rest of my life from now on. From here, she can see her neighbors, the Sanders, still sitting in the rubble of their home, covered in soot, coughing, <sighs> wondering where to go from here. Kim Brunhuber, CBC News, San Fernando Valley, California.